buy it. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Pixel Show and show number two of the stories behind the image. I am your host, Robert Evans, here on the Pixel Show set. And again, I wanted to create uh, some mindless content for you guys, something you could just watch, enjoy, and uh, share some of the stories uh, of the images that I've taken over uh, my 25 plus years as a professional photographer. So this is the second show in a series of eight. Uh, so let's get started. Before we do that, uh, if you're new to the Pixel Show, this is the first time you're seeing it, go back, watch some of our other content that we have online. I recently shot a dog sled race. There's a senior portrait session, uh, how to create beautiful Christmas cards. I went to a hockey game and shot uh, with my point and shoot camera, the Sony RX100. If you don't know, I am a Sony artisan of imagery, so we talk a lot about Sony on this show and Sony cameras, but in photography in general, you can always learn something. Okay, so this first image, uh, pretty comical, right? So the story behind this, I was doing a wedding in Cabo a few years ago. It was the second wedding of the family that I uh, worked for. I did both sisters' weddings. And uh, they brought this donkey, this was the rehearsal dinner, so they brought this donkey into uh, the restaurant and uh, Somebody like said to me, I was just walking around shooting cameras like, oh, they brought a donkey in. And so I went in there and I went up and I took a few pictures of it. And uh, right as I walked away and kind of shot a few more pictures and turned around, I saw the donkey doing this. And I was shooting at the time with a 70D 200 lens. And uh, I quickly like snapped the photo thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to miss that. And that was my one and only chance to get it. Uh, but luckily I did get the shot. Um, my favorite thing about the photo, honestly, is the two women in the background. I think they really make the image. Yes, it's really funny seeing a donkey drink a Corona, uh, but uh, I love their expressions and it really helps sell the image. So sometimes you get a little bit lucky. All right, so let's go to the next image. This image uh, is an image of a bunch of pregnant ladies, obviously. Um, pretty cool image. I shot this in my studio more than uh, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, and the story behind this is uh, these are some of my wife's friends who all happen to be pregnant all at the same time. And uh, it's sort of inspired by the Herb Ritz image of all the supermodels uh, nude on the floor together. I've always loved that image and I thought, oh, you know, I don't want to copy anything, but we're always inspired by other artists. And so I thought, well, how could I do my own spin on that? And so that's what gave me this idea. And I wanted to show uh, these ladies all together. So how I accomplished this, um, I lit it with them all, all clothed, of course. I showed them how I wanted them to be and I posed them. And then uh, I walked out of the room, I had them undress, I came back, they were sitting there like that, uh, and we took a few photos along with a few other ones, but this one is my favorite. I really love this image, it really worked in black and white, of course I shot it on a black and white background, um, I think it's only lit with one light, uh, but one of my favorite, uh, maternity images. Okay, next. So this image was shot at a wedding. And uh, this wedding was at the Beverly Hills Hotel. And uh, I was shooting the bride getting ready, of course. And uh, there was a little knock at the door. And the door opened up just a little bit. And this cute little grandma peeked in. And the videographer and I were in the room together. And uh, she comes walking in the room. And we were both sort of on one side of the bed. And this whole beautiful scene unfolded uh, unfolded in the room of the grandma. I mean, she kissed her hand and they, you know, looked at each other, they hugged, you know, she was all of like four foot eight, it seemed, but just really a cute moment. One of those moments that you witnessed that you like felt like you shouldn't have seen it. And, but you were at the same time, like so honored to be able to take part of it and actually capture an image uh, as well. 
Okay, this image uh, is actually a fairly recent image that I took last summer. Um, I was working for a client on Mackinac Island uh, in Michigan. Mackinac Island is a little tiny island uh, that sits um, on the top of Lake Superior and Lake Huron, kind of where they touch almost, I believe. And uh, the cool thing about this island is that uh, there are no cars allowed on the island, so it's just bicycles and horse and carriage. Um, and the story behind this particular image, there was a, a bicycle club called the Michigan Wheelmen, and they were on the island uh, doing their thing, but what they were doing, to, to my to knowledge, was there's about an eight mile road that goes all the way around this island, and they ride these bicycles 100 miles, so they call it, I think, a centurion ride, and they try to ride 100 uh, miles in a day. Now, I had spent the day previously uh, talking to uh, these guys and taking some portraits of them. Uh, I recently got the Sony 135 1.8, and uh, I was doing some portraits with that lens and sort of talking to these guys. Uh, there was many of them. But this image was taken uh, the following morning on Saturday morning. I woke up early. I went out to take some images, and... I come across uh, these guys uh, taking a group photo. There was probably 150 men and women taking a picture together, of all dressed in their, their periodic costumes, and it was great. And I walked up and they were all posed, but sort of documenting it, I didn't really want to take that picture. Yes, I took one, but there was actually a man standing in front of them and telling them you know, information. Today we're gonna have lunch, at the blah, 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 and so forth. But as these uh, gentlemen and ladies walked away, uh, I had a 50 millimeter one four on at the time, and uh, I started snapping some images. And this was one of my favorite images. I love it because it looks like it could have been taken 100 years ago. This particular image uh, was taken at a wedding uh, at a location in Laguna Niguel in Southern California called Seven Degrees. and. Uh, the, the inspiration of this came about because this is actually the room the bride got ready in and she was changing and uh, she asked the videographer and I to leave the room and we did and she was sort of in the middle of the room but we could see through this door and, and watch them change and get in there but we couldn't see anything and uh, you know it felt like we shouldn't be there but really we couldn't see anything but then it got my mind thinking like what could I do that's really cool and uh do a cool shot. So I figured if I were to see anything, I have to get them closer to the glass. Um, so I asked her to come closer to the dress, to closer to the glass. She had a really beautiful dress, and I wanted to make sure that I saw that and the textures and the layering. And uh, I had her hold her flowers up, which I also had noticed that were sitting on the table. I think you can see the other one there in the background. So you can see the other one there in the background. And I saw the flowers sitting on the table, so I wanted to make sure she had them. Uh, so that's sort of how I came about it. It's all lit with available light. You can tell it's a little bit yellow, so it's the overhead lights. And you can see that her arm is pressed into the glass and her back just a little bit. Um, and so good, I really like that. I had this hang in my studio in Los Angeles for a long time, um, and it was in a, a big, beautiful frame, and people really liked it because it kind of looked more like a painting than it did a photograph. All right, this image. Uh, one of the things I love to do at weddings is focus on grandparents. And the reason that that is is because I really loved my grandfather. I actually have a picture of him hanging over the desk in my office. And uh, so I always make it an effort to take candid images of grandparents. Well, this was a no-brainer image. Um, I try to do that throughout the day at the wedding and the reception. Uh, but the bride basically wanted to go down and see her grandma prior to doing the first look with her groom. And so we walked down, we went into the hotel room, and her grandmother was sitting on the other side of the room. And as she headed towards her, to say hi, I sort of like knew this moment was coming and I sort of wedged myself and I was like up against a wall and you know, shooting what I could and you know, grabbed this image as she kissed her grandmother on the head. And one of the other stories that goes along with this image was after the wedding, uh, the bride had, was coming into my studio to uh, pick up her wedding album. And uh, when she did that, um, 
she came in, we said hello to each other, you know, how are you doing, yada yada. And then uh, I went in the back to get her uh, wedding album. And when I did, I came back out and the bride was sitting there crying. And I was like, oh my gosh, what happened? And uh, she said, I saw that picture on your wall. And in my studio in Los Angeles, I had these TVs built into the wall with frames around them and they changed. Uh, so there was always different images in them. And, she, and this image happened to come up and she was crying. She's like, oh my gosh, I love that image. And my grandmother recently passed away, uh, which is another reason that I really uh, make an effort to focus on grandparents at weddings because I've heard this over the years. If you're lucky enough to have your grandparents at your wedding, then, uh, you know, I think it's a blessing and I want to record that because I know even my own wife's grandma, uh, she passed away about six months after our wedding. So grandparents is one of the things that I do try to uh, focus on. Okay, so let's move on. This is an engagement image that I shot at Union Station in downtown LA. Um, I set the couple across from me in the main hallway that leads to the tracks, uh, back and forth to the trains. And uh, I wanted, the purpose was, I wanted to slow down the shutter and get some feet passing uh, in front of me, next to me and blur them a little bit. And, and then I got this image, it was one of the last images we took and this guy came by on the bicycle, uh, timed it just right and uh, I got this image. Now I kind of feel that uh, sometimes when I have good intentions to get certain shots, I feel like the universe sort of rewards me with something a little bit more. Um, and I, that's what I think I got here. And I just like that the, the bicycle tire goes through them. Uh, if you ever watched any of my shows, The Power of Simple, uh, they're not dead center in the photo. It's, so it's a good rule of thirds. Uh, they're in, there's middle ground, foreground, background, uh, leading lines. I mean, it's a really, it's a really great image, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I really love this image and I was super excited at the time that I got it. All right, this image. Uh, so this image, uh, not that it's that great of an image, but as I told you before, I am a Sony artisan of imagery. And uh, this image was taken uh, back around 2014-ish, I think, uh, when the A7 III or the E-mount cameras were launched for Sony. This was taken in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, Sony does these things where they have uh, the press come, they launch a new camera, a new lens. If it's a big enough deal, they invite all your favorite bloggers and YouTube hosts and uh, they come and get to use the cameras and we got to do all sorts of really fun things uh, like uh, hang gliding, we went to the Jack Daniels distillery, uh, we went uh, mud whomping in Jeeps and they asked me to come along as a, I was a fairly new artisan about a year or so in and they asked me to come along um, and I'm just gonna share another image with you from that. Um, this is also something we got to do, you know, shoot horses. And, and they asked me to come along just to sort of answer any questions for the press um, and be there to help. I, so I sort of did that. I took my own photos, of course. And then I also sort of documented what went on. So that last image, uh, we were at a, a Ben Folds concert at the Ryman Theater in Nashville. And uh, this was before the show and everybody was up on stage. And so... Uh, they were all up there and I said, everybody hold up your cameras. It was a very spontaneous image. Um, and so these are all the first uh, A7s that had come out. All right, so let's go on. This image, pretty cool. Uh, this was a fashion shoot that I did uh, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and is at a place called Ice Castles. Now they do these where it's cold in the winter. I know they're in Minneapolis. Uh, they are in Utah, Canada. Uh, if you just Google Ice Castles, you can find uh, the different locations. And uh, so we were shooting some dresses for a local bridal salon. And uh, I really love, this was the entrance to the Ice Castles. And it happened to be a beautiful sunny day that day, uh, about 32 degrees, which is warm when it's cold. I know that sounds crazy for those of you that live in warm places. Um, but uh, it was very tolerable. And We'd shot there all morning, and at the end of the day, 
this they open it up to the public and it's about 13 14 dollars to get in there and this woman comes walking in with this black scotty dog and a red leash and i was like oh my gosh i need to use that dog so i just asked the lady and she said yes so i put the dog in the photo and took a couple more pictures with my model and i just love the contrast between the black and the white and the blue and the blue sky and for me it worked so uh that's how i got that image this image uh, is a fun image and uh, reminds me of uh, when I was uh, at the family farm. This is actually my nephew. His name is Shane. And uh, I was at my wife's dad's farm. We were there with a couple of the other cousins. And we were there uh, just for a couple of days, sharing time as a family. My father-in-law has a hobby farm in Iowa. And I was like inside his garage taking some pictures of his old tractors. And uh, I hear a noise behind me and I turn around and there's Shane sitting there. And uh, I was like, oh my gosh, that is amazing. Like I saw the light right away and the light combined with the uh, red can and him in his grandpa's boots and his underwear and his arms crossed just staring at me. I literally just clicked off a couple images and he ran out of it. As soon as I pointed the camera at her, he ran away but a really kind of like a fun, unique, uh, beautifully lit, but very spontaneous image. Uh, and so that is how that came about. I'll let you look at it again real quickly before we move on. But yeah, he looked at me, gave me about three seconds and then took off running. This image was a little bit of a fashion shoot that I did. This was captured at the Disney Hall in downtown LA. And uh, this was shot in the middle of the day in the bright sun, as you can see. Um, and uh, I was shooting it for a magazine for an upcoming event that was at Disney Hall. I believe it was a wedding related event. And uh, I really love this. Like one of the things that I like about this image, and especially if you watch my shows, Power of Simple on the channel, uh, there's a lot of things going on. You have leading lines leading uh, to and from the bride in many directions. Uh, you also have rule of thirds. She's in the lower third and right third of the frame. Um, and the other thing is she's in the direct sun sunlight. And this is usually a big no-no, um, but the reason uh, that you can get away with it, and I have one rule, like if you're gonna put someone in the direct sunlight, uh, you know, a model or something like that, sort of my rule is, and I do it on the wedding day, is. I just don't want them looking at me. So if you don't have them look at you, then you sort of eliminate the shadows and those other things. Uh, here, I kind of also asked her to look up in a way so that the sun kind of hits her face. Uh, again, you can see a little closer. So the sun hits her face uh, and it's kind of split light. So it's brighter on uh, the short side of her face and uh, shadowier on the uh, wide side of her face. Um, so anyway, love that image, love the building. If you ever get a chance, uh, they're pretty okay about letting you shoot there. This was many years ago, so I don't remember. Uh, and I can't tell you what it's like now. This image was shot at Sony Condo Trip. Those of you that, have you heard about Sony Condo Trip? This is the very first one, uh, Sony Condo Trip, and this was in uh, Santa Barbara, California. Sony does these once a year. There is one scheduled for August of this year, and hopefully that's still going to happen. Uh, and it's in Idaho, I believe. Uh, this will be the fourth condo trip. But if you've never been to condo trip, you can pay, you can go, you can uh, meet uh, your favorite artisans, myself and all the other ones uh, that are there. You can meet some of your favorite YouTubers because a lot of those guys come and, and vloggers. And But Sony sets up these shoots where you can rent models, you can rent equipment, uh, you can you can go out and shoot and and just have fun and, and create it, it's and it's the, the camaraderie the people that you meet it's just a really great experience they always have them in pretty places uh, so this year's like I said I believe is in Idaho so hopefully you guys will come and I will see you there this year let me give you one more look but this was a model that was set up uh, she was in this old RV and she had this old phone. Uh, I really loved this phone because it reminded me of when I was a little kid. Um, uh, I used to spend my summers with my grandparents and my grandparents had a phone like this at their lake home. 
And I remember one of the cool things about it is it was because it was in a little town, you'd pick the phone up and all the neighbors shared the line. So a lot of times you could pick it up and you could hear people talking on the phone. So sometimes in the middle of the day when I was bored, you know, I was seven, eight, nine, ten year old kid, I'd pick up the phone and listen to other people's conversations. So it really reminded me of that and it brought back those memories for me. This image was taken early in the morning, if you didn't guess that already. Um, I love to fish and I fish a lot. And uh, so this was a fishing trip that I went on with a good friend of mine named Nate. And we went to a lake in Minnesota called Wabado, which I affectionately called Wabano because we didn't catch any fish. We were musky fishing. So any of you know about musky fishing, it's a little bit more challenging. They say it's the fish of 10,000 casts. Um, and I definitely put my time in a 10,000 cast before I actually caught one finally. Uh, but, so this image, we were putting the boat in early in the morning at Wabado. It was actually dark. I did see uh, that bird sitting over there on the uh, swim raft, and but the light wasn't up yet, so it wasn't that great of an image. I shot this with my Sony RX-103 that I had at the time. And I love the, if you've never heard or seen the Sony RX100, great camera for travel. It's light, it's a little bit, digger, little bit bigger, it's like a digital SLR, but it has a built-in 24 to 70, excuse me, built-in, this is the best part, 24 to 600 millimeter, and it's F4 all the way up to 600. So you really have quite a range with one camera, um, and so you can zoom in quite far. And this was a good distance across the lake, so that 600 millimeter came in play right there. And uh, so I was watching the bird, and it was, like I said, it was kind of boring because there was no light. And right then, the sun started to peak uh, over the, the trees, and here comes the light. And all of a sudden, it was just so magical. Such a beautiful, with the sun skimming across the lake and the golden light hitting that bird. And I'm over there snapping figure pictures and so then the funny part about this story if you were there not so funny to me is like uh, Nate had gone we put the boat in and he'd gone to park we had the truck and the trailer and I was supposed to be holding onto the boat which I had let go of and I just barely as I turned around <laughs> looked and saw the boat floating away like reached over and like as far as I could and like grabbed the boat and pulled it back toward me or I would have been swimming in the lake that morning because uh it would have been my fault as it was. Okay, so this is the final image. If you've hung around this long, thank you. Uh, I'll remind you there are about seven more of these shows that I'm gonna do, so if you do enjoy this, please come back, please check back, uh, please subscribe, all those things. So this image, uh, they do this thing in Minneapolis called um, Crashed Ice, and I went, this was about four years ago, and I went for the first time, I had heard about this, and uh, I, I couldn't even believe they did this. But crashed ice is sort of a combination, if you will. It's like they skate down a long ice track, so it's a little bit like motocross, because there's you know three or four guys that come across a track. Um, and uh, they race each other, and it's a time thing to the bottom. And at the time that I shot this, uh, I was shooting the A6000, uh, Sony's little camera because at the time there was no a9 there was no so this was the fastest camera this camera shot uh, I believe about uh, 10 frames a second somewhere in there at the time and uh, I really loved it because it shot fast and you could capture images like this but this guy uh, falling amongst this is right after they come out of the first turn um, they come off the ramp and they like, start like motorcycles do all together and then they come down a hill and they go and uh, this guy falling uh, you know, looks and it looks like the other guy's like catching him. And believe it or not, um, you know, this guy just literally stood back up and kept skating. But it's just these moments, you know, that you capture and you're like wondering, like, what the heck is going on there? But uh, really, really uh, one of my favorite pictures just because uh, it's kind of such a unique sport. Well, you made it to the end. Thank you very much for watching. I have about uh, six more shows to do. Uh, the story behind the images, some of my favorite images for the past uh, 25 plus years that I've been shooting professionally. So if you enjoyed this, please check back. Uh, please subscribe and uh, tell everyone about the Pixel Show and go back and watch some of our episodes. Thanks again. I'm Robert Evans and this is the Pixel Show.